So what's gonna happen is oh, yeah, you set a bolt in down here. So we're gonna make two spacers or cut two spacers, bolt it right to here. Yep. And then we'll get our height perfected. This will get bent to ninety. You're so epic, man. <laughs> well, I want it. I want it to be. That looks pretty good. I want it to be perfectly centered. No, I totally agree. So then when this is bent to 90, we'll bolt these two together. We got some adjustment there, and that's where our that's collector... So, so extra, I love it. On my C6, I wanted to do the exhaust system a lot different than what is usually done, and to make the sound of the car a lot different. My S14 already sounded quite exotic, but in order to take it to the next level, I had to do something crazy. Okay. Yeah, like a 30 to I'm 40. I'm going to do the slip and keep it tight because I'm just worried about front clearance after. We're doing a three and a half to four transition. Out of this? Yeah, which it's, they said was the most important uh, part. Does it have to be straight? or Because our transition is bending instantly, right? So yeah. do they want... So they, I, bought, I bought the transition, the three to four. Okay. So we have to cut it in yeah, half. Uh, tack it on the tube. That is going to be the majority of the Venturi low pressure draw that they so, wanted to see. So this will be three and a half to four. Yeah. Bump right on it. It'll so be probably this two. long. It'll probably be that long. And then we're going to slip right on that, we're thinking, when it's at four inch. Yeah. Because of the difficulty of this header design, there was really only one guy that I could ask. Mike Cattell from GT Custom Exhaust. The reason I brought Mike on is because the design and the fabrication of the system requires two skilled hands with like-minded visions, and ultimately, it's the only way to make it efficiently. More than 10 years ago, back when I was driving an S13 hatch with an RB25 swapped in it. And he's always been driving RX-7 FC and a BMW for as long as I've known him. He's always had the craziest custom cars and he's been a local legend for longer than I have. Okay, so let's check the other side because it doesn't quite look center with the engine, but... No, it's 11 there, so we're an inch over this side. That's a, that's a big unit. That's in the center. So full disclosure, the main reason I'm doing an eight into one is for the sound that it's going to create. Uh, there are performance advantages and there are some things that make it better, but then there's also disadvantages. It clutters the engine bay, it causes a lot more heat, it's more difficult to work on takeoff and all of that. But I think the fact that it's going to bring a lot of awareness to this build and to the car, and then it'll be the most distinct sound on any track ever. Uh, those are the main reasons why I did an eight into one. So we do want to keep it next to the frame rail because the alternator here, I don't really know how we're going to sneak by it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't see where else it could go because it can't go here because all of our runners are going to be there. Yeah, that is why. Right? <laughs> If I could get an put inverted, it in the back on the dip of the brakes, man. I could get an inverted alternator and run it like right on the other side of the crankshaft. Yep. The thing is, if our runners are going over top of this line, yep. Then there will be space here. It doesn't need to be there, but no, we can throw it right down here, man. We can be right down. Here. That may be too close to the pump. The uh, pump sits dry here. sum. The dry sum cog is probably like there. So ideally, we'd want to be... And then it pivots off of this hole, and it swings like this to tension the belt. And then the problem with the passenger side is the transmission, all the gears are off to that side in the box, so, the so there's, no, there's no room. Does a, Cor does a Corvette intake not come over the It factory? sits flat, and it goes over the, fa it goes over the factory cross member and down end. This, the square front, it goes over that? Is that an exact replica of yeah. like the front end? Yeah. Yeah, you've just put this motor really. You, you said you haven't moved it back. No, but I didn't move it back. That's where it's Because the intakes aren't that long on the Corvettes. 
like, like to, I don't know. To me, the intake literally comes down here on a Corvette. Like yeah. that's far. That's like two feet. <laughs> like, What's the engine like, doing back there? Well, yeah, the engine looks really far back, but. <laughs> well, the rack is here. And then the pulley is like this far away from the And the rack. rad's sitting on a crazy, where does the rad sit on the The rad angle? sits on a big angle right here. Because the intake goes right on top of the rad pretty much yeah. with that like oval. I say let's get the hood. Let's toss a hood on. I don't know where it is. So fitting up the eight into one exhaust starts with finding out where you can put the collector. It has to clear all of your accessories, your pulleys and your things that go on the front of the engine. Um, so I made a jig for that, that holds the collector exactly center of, in the chassis. And then I was able to pitch the collector at a good angle for us to clear the hood and clear everything else. From there, we had to do some custom modifying to the header flanges because we're running uh, Frankenstein heads on this car and we don't have those heads yet. So there are slight differences. And then running each runner, we are running them 38 inches long um, and equal length. So the only difference between each runner was about a quarter of an inch. So 37 and three quarter being the shortest, 38 being the longest. Uh, so to, to start, we made the first runner go from the last cylinder on the engine, the furthest one away. And from there, we basically just made it a straight shot as short as possible. It went really smooth. It needed a couple bends here and there. And we made the connection really easily. Then we mirrored that on the other side and went from there. That kind of gives us our avoidance regions. It tells us where the other runners are going to have to go. Uh, the whole setup is using engine plates, so we're kind of like trimming my mock-up plates to fit what we're doing, and then I will be able to make the final machine brackets using Dylan and our CNC machine uh, after we finish the entire 8 into 1 system. What tube, like what tube is going to be the, the lowest down, I would say, would be uh, any of the ones that go yeah. into here, and what cylinders are going into those? That's what we should the write. Back, yeah. The back two are going into these two. So uh, seven this side, or sorry, that's seven back there. So eight and then seven, right? Is that what they are? Yeah. I melted number seven, so I know that one's number seven. Don't make me question myself now. Also don't question my handwriting, it's there. <laughs> so we yes. can use the smaller bends right out of the head. I think I only got two of those. You yeah. do. But we only need to do it with these two. And then we get four bends out of it. Ish. some ovals in this flange here so it'll fit on Josiah's new heads for the Corvette engine that I believe they're Frankenstein heads so all we're gonna do is throw that in the mill I made a little program in fusion to just slot that out add the chamfer extend the chamfer so we'll throw that in the machine we'll get some machining footage and we'll show you the finished product So pretty much showed up and uh, kind of had a plan that we've been talking about for a long time. Spent majority of the morning game planning, what bends we're going to need. So then I just sliced up a bunch of uh, bends in a box I got over there that I'm going to take home after and bring with me and sway them up a little bit. And uh, just because the, the oval on the bends, so we want them to hit the fit the head flanges nice and perfect at two inch. We don't want it like two inch ish. Um, we got this big fancy eight to one collector. We have our little power expansion chamber put on it. That's gonna step from three and a half to four inch and then four inch straight into this big old U-pipe here, which is gonna run us beside the frame and then gonna adapt to titanium after that. 
and uh, most of the days just been planning, planning and prepping, planning and prepping, and then come back and start attacking. And yeah, other than that, stoked on it. Welding up nice, shiny, clean parts is my favorite. I get to do it most of the time, but sometimes I get suckered into playing with gross stuff, so it's always nice when you get suckered into playing with nice stuff. concerned about anything but we got our flange all the way forward right that's what we wanted this side is forward the other side's got to be pushed back okay so yeah just trying to figure out the trajectory of i think this that's one. like literally what you're holding there is perfect okay so do you want me to i can mark this on the flange and just tack it on the table or i can just bring my welder over and you can hold this right here yeah and we can I'll... tack it there because i only need this one tacked and then we can start playing with this and and then i can well, put one in there and Maybe we should mark these two, tack these, because I'm gonna have it oriented so that this is exactly zero degrees. <laughs> My buddy messaged me yesterday, he's like, is that a Corvette? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> What's left of a Corvette? Yeah. <laughs> Silver 80 valve cover. I'm gonna be running Frankenstein heads. I think I talked about this, how they move. They align the headers and the ports by moving basically where the threads are for the flanges. So we had to mill the flanges to simulate what the Frankenstein heads are actually going to be position wise. Because we don't have them. As you can see, these are boat anchor heads that we got from Cam. Right now we're doing the first two runners going into the collector. This is gonna determine the path of every other runner. That's what we're doing. All right, so this is the teamwork's gonna make the dream work because I almost gotta like sneak in over top. We're almost gonna have to get Jack's opinion on this too of the, the straightness. That looks pretty good right there in terms of like height, like straightness. And then I'm gonna put one tack on it, but even just down a little bit right there. Gonna be that, but with but a short little. But we want this back straight. because we want the leg, too. Like you want this cut like there. Yes. How much room do we want to leave up here? Well, we're gonna take up some room coming to do this one. The biggest thing to consider would be once we get two of these runners, where are the rest of the tubes gonna be going? That's gonna be the biggest thing. So this needs to be shorter, like I thought. No, 100%, but I'm trying to simulate this, right, to go into the bend. Yeah. It if it's like that, it's not, that won't work. So no matter where we bring this one, it's gonna need to swoop into it. This is gonna be a little bit It's gonna be a little out. bit out, and then this will be in more too. I'm thinking we pick yeah. chassis points so that also when you look at it, the welds are gonna be in the same spot. So we can go, up here is gonna be way too close to the motor. That's on the end of that chassis point, like oh, right yeah. at the edge there, or the inner edge there. Trim Let's that one. put the marker right against this motor plate on this side and just mark the tube, and then we'll do the same thing over there. Uh, the way that both of us, Mike and I, make sure that visually and aesthetically the system is perfect is really just using our years of experience. Mike has been building exhaust, headers, and all sorts of things for a very long time, and so have I. Symmetry is visual, and it's also measurable. To start, we were just using like finger gaps and making sure that the gaps to each runner 
is the same and then Mike is very good at always making sure that the runners are not touching anywhere so that they have room to expand and contract when you weld them because they do actually change in length and the way that we design the system hopefully when we weld all of the runners they're all going to shorten in a similar direction and the collector is still going to fit fine variation like there an eighth an eighth of an inch yeah to the finished product means nothing but while building it it can be everything yeah so. or that tube is already a little bit longer than this tube so if we measure you know, even this being slightly clocked yeah. differently it's it's one of those kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Just keep on. Keep so that's on. probably going to end up being there. I think that's going to be pretty perfect. But again, it's probably going to need just that little swoop up into so it. So that we can put a bend here. Yeah. Well, because we want the leg in here. You don't want to use a 90 on it, right? Because then it's going to be hard to get it in and out. You could go down, but then it's going to bring it further up where we don't want it to be. So Mike and I are using a mechanics wire to make sure that the runners are all equal. Plus we're measuring the elbows. We cut all of our elbows ahead of time. So they were all cut to exactly 90 degrees. And then we measure the straight sections to make sure that we're putting in the same size piece on both sides. We verify with a mechanics wire that we cut to 38 inches and kind of run it along the contour of each runner to make sure that where it starts and where it ends is pretty much the exact same on every runner. These need to be at the exact same points. Like, you know, all that needs to look the symmetrical. So, so far, like here it's pretty good. This one's, I'm happy with this one, but I'm not going any further on this one. I mean, so in this distance, you know, like with the pipe, that looks nice and straight. There's a gap there, so then we can make the one to go around. Now what the struggle is, is I guess, cause this pipe might be a little bit lower than that one. This is a huge distance here. I can bring it down, but look at the head distance. Yeah, I would make the runners the same, but not worry about the heads. The distance between the heads, yeah. because that's what, like, that's my so struggle is, right now is that distance versus this distance. But that makes sense because it's the same heads and they're flipped. I just want to point this and I have my 45 on it. So I'm like, my height's good yes. if we're going to go that way. And then that stays, you know, like right there. That's a good distance there. Now make this one be the same distance out of it because we're doing this side first.
So it's the end of day three and we ran out of material. We used more than what we had thought. I bought a bunch of UJs and we needed more than what I got. We ordered the rest of the stuff we needed through Art at Vibrant. Uh, he ensured us that we would get it early the next week. So we're banking on that to finish. We are on a bit of a time crunch and the car needs to go off to paint. So we need to know that we're gonna be able to get this done.